I think the biggest thing that made me successful early on was I had this power to empathize at a very high level. So my emotional IQ effectively made up for my lack of real training skill or, or training IQ. So when I think of empathy, here's how I would describe it. Maybe there's a different like textbook definition. But empathy to me is this ability to internalize what someone else is thinking or feeling. Hello, and welcome to the Physical Preparation Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Robertson, and today we're going to talk about five superpowers that can make you an elite trainer or coach. Now, before we jump into this week's episode, real quickly, I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, I was doing a little bit of digging here recently, wanted to see where the podcast was at, and I'm not a huge believer in the outcome-based metrics but looking to potentially bring on some sponsors, continue to grow and evolve this show over the years. And so a a few numbers that I wanted to share with you. First off, as of today, this is our 311th episode. Now, when I got started, I thought 50, maybe 100 episodes tops. Like 100 was my absolute limit. I wanted this thing to have a shelf life. But what's been really interesting is that it's only continued to grow and gain more momentum. Whereas a lot of a lot of shows have this tendency to, you know, spike up for a while and then they plateau and then they just drop off. Like this show has continued to grow. One of my big outcome-based goals, if I had one, was to try and average a thousand downloads per day. And here in November and December, we've actually averaged over eleven hundred downloads per day. And over the course of the show, we've had 1.6 million total downloads. So, I mean, that's just mind-blowing to me. It's also a little disheartening because, you know, when you hear uh, somebody like Tim Ferriss has got uh, a million downloads per episode, not quite on that level, but for a very niche topic, like helping people like you become better trainers, coaches, rehab professionals to think that 1.6 million people have downloaded our show over the years is mind-blowing. And here's something that's really cool that I never knew. The people that produce my podcast actually told me that that number is actually a very low representation of how many people have listened because downloads do not include streams. So if you go onto my website and just stream the show or you go anywhere else and stream the show but don't download it, it doesn't factor into those numbers. So... All of this is a very roundabout way of me saying thank you so much for your support over the years. Truly love and appreciate you. And as long as you keep enjoying the show, as long as it keeps helping you grow and evolve within your career, I'm going to keep doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Again, just can't say that enough. Love and appreciate you. Now, today we're going to talk about five superpowers that can make you an elite trainer or coach. Now, as you know, I'm a big Marvel fan. I love comic books. I love comics, superheroes. But one of the downsides when you hear the term superpower, at least in comic books, these are generally things that people are either born with, like Superman uh, was born with his superpowers. And when the Earth's sun hit him, it like activated them. Or there's like some sort of big event, right? Like Spider-Man got bit by the spider and had his superpowers. So the superpowers we're going to talk about today are skills that you can actually cultivate, okay? Because look, if you listen to this show, you probably love to nerd out. You love to focus on the X's and O's of training and coaching. We all love to talk about the best exercises, the best set rep schemes, how to lay out programs, how adaptations work and allostasis and homeostasis. Like that stuff's great, but if I'm being really realistic, I've had a lot of success in my career, and especially early on in my career, without being great at those things. I wasn't a great program designer. I didn't understand all the science behind writing a program or allostasis and homeostasis. I didn't, I didn't know that stuff. So it brings to light this conversation of hard versus soft skills. And your hard skills are like the technical, the detail-driven stuff. And the soft skills are the things that are a little bit harder to put your finger on. But that's what we want to focus on here today. And I think, unfortunately, uh, 
soft skills get kind of a bad rap, but you can't say they're not important. You know, I don't love the term soft skill myself, but you don't have to love it to respect the fact that it plays a role in your success. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to jump into these five superpowers that can help make you an elite trainer or coach. Believe it or not, 2022 is right around the corner and I want to help you make it your best year ever. As 2021 wraps up, I've made it a goal to totally revamp my online coaching platforms. The fact of the matter is I want to help more people than ever before, and that starts with people like you. So if you're interested in getting in the best shape of your life this year, I've got two options that might interest you. Option number one is my private online coaching. Here, we'll essentially take offline training and move it online. We'll start with an initial startup call to learn all about you, your needs and goals, I'll create a custom, personalized program that's going to help you achieve said goals, and we'll communicate regularly to make sure that you're on the right track and getting great results. I'm only taking a maximum of five new clients in 2022, so if you're interested in my one-on-one online coaching, send me an email at mike at robertsontrainingsystems.com. Now, private coaching may not be for everyone, so if that's the case, I'm also totally revamping my RTS annual program for 2022, and that could potentially be a great fit for you as well. In this program, we go through four three-month phases of training, building the engine, leaning season, athletic domination, and stronger. But the cool part of this program is that it's more than just a training program. Every month, you'll not only get a new workout to follow, but we'll also set monthly challenges where we develop habits in regards to nutrition, recovery, and mindset to help ensure that next year is your best year ever. And trust me, I know the last two years haven't always been kind to our habits and routines, so that portion of the program alone is worth the price of admission. If you're interested in the annual training group, you can learn more at robertsontrainingsystems.com forward slash annual. And if you've got any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me directly at mike at robertsontrainingsystems.com and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. Okay, that's enough from me. Thank you so much for listening and I'd love the chance to work with you and help you make 2022 your best year ever. All right, so let's dive in and let's talk about these five superpowers or these five skills that can make you an elite trainer or coach. Number one, very simply, you've got to improve your communication skills. Now, so I've got these outlines for whenever I do solo shows. And (laughs) just reading this first line is pretty funny. But have I ever told you about how I cheated my way through eighth grade English? Hopefully, Mr. Bullock never hears this. But man, let's just be real. I hated everything about English. Reading, writing, anything that had to do with English, I hated. I was a math and science guy. Like, I loved algebra. I loved diving in and learning about physics and chemistry, biology. Those things fascinated me. English seemed like a massive annoyance. So essentially, I cheated my way through eighth grade English class. I don't even remember how I did it, but there were like these cards that we had to go and we had to get and you had to like read a passage and then like answer some questions. But then I figured out that if you go to the next card in the system, it gave you all the answers to the previous card. So it was a very strange setup. And so that's what I would do. I would basically like read the passage, take the time to read it. And then I would go and I'd get the next one that had all the answers, take the answers, fill them into the bubbles or whatever I had to do. And that's how I got through eighth grade English. Like I absolutely hated doing this. Now, something weird happened along the way. Because even into like high school and college, I hated writing papers. Uh, I didn't like giving presentations. I didn't think I was bad at them. I just didn't like it. But something really weird happened as I got into grad school, as I started really getting into like the strength and conditioning side, I got into powerlifting and I'm reading this old powerlifting magazine. It was called Monster Muscle. And I'm like, Like this article is like, okay, but like, I felt like I could write a better article. And so that's how I got started. I literally wrote the guy that, that published the magazine. I was into powerlifting. I didn't have money for gear. 
like the squat suits and knee wraps and all that stuff was expensive. And I was a, a grad school guy. So basically living on like $500 a month. And so I reached out and I said, Hey, can I write this article for you about squatting? And they're like, yeah, of course uh, we can't pay you, but we'll give you gear. Perfect. So this weird thing happened as I started writing these articles, I realized like, wow, I actually enjoy writing. It's not for school. This is for pleasure. And it allows me to give back. And then something even crazier happens. So as I start writing articles for Monster Muscle, I start writing for T Nation, I start writing for Elite, I realize, wow, like this is this is helpful. But if I want to impact even more people, I need to not only become a better writer, but I need to become a better speaker as well. I mean, I gave some really, really bad presentations early on in my career where I wasn't prepared or I just had this wall of text on a PowerPoint slide. So how does this apply to you? Well, communication skills, whether it's writing, whether it's speaking, however you're choosing to communicate with your clients, your athletes, or people that are important to you, communication skills allow you to become more persuasive. They, I mean, essentially you can get people to do what you want them to do and not in like a, a sleazy manipulative kind of way, but Look, if you train people, you need them to do certain things. You need them to show up on time. You need them to work hard. You need them to make sure they're making good choices outside of the gym. So being a better communicator allows you to be more persuasive. It allows you to become more clear and concise in your thoughts. Because look, we're already inundated with stuff. So if you're writing an email to a client or you're writing a text or you're trying to convince somebody to do something, being very clear and concise and how it benefits them is important. But ultimately, becoming a better communicator helps people buy in and ultimately get better results. And this is something I found time and time and time again, as my communication skills have improved in all mediums, I have gotten better results with my clients and athletes. Now, I'd like to think that I've leveled up in other areas as well in the hard skills that allow that to happen. But look, if people aren't showing up, if they're not doing the things you need them to do outside of the gym, they're not going to get results. And part of that is you being able to communicate as clearly and as persuasively as possible as to how it benefits them. So improving your communication skills is something you can start doing right now today that will help you get better results. Number two, learn to develop empathy. Now, here is what's crazy. When I started off either at Ball State as a volunteer slash assistant strength and conditioning coach, when I was at the Athletic Performance Center in Fort Wayne, like I was a really, really bad trainer. At least looking back and do, knowing the things that I was doing, like I was not good by any stretch of the imagination. But here's what's crazy. A lot of the people that I worked with thought I was a really high level coach. Now, you're probably wondering, like, how is there this massive disconnect? How can I know I'm not good and know the things that I don't know, yet other people perceive me to be at a certain level? And, you know, I've thought a lot about this over the years, but I think the biggest thing that made me successful early on was I had this power to empathize at a very high level. So my emotional IQ effectively made up for my lack of real training skill or, or training IQ. So when I think of empathy, here's how I would describe it. Maybe there's a different like textbook definition. But empathy to me is this ability to internalize what someone else is thinking or feeling. Now, I will give you a recent example where my empathy superpower just about blew me up. Uh, if you have ever heard of this show called The Maid <laughs> on Netflix, I know this is a tangent, but I think it's valuable. There is so much going on in this show, right? There's like poverty, there's domestic violence, there's alcoholism, there's mental health issues. The fact that I have a, a strong empathic nature to me watching this show was almost overwhelming because there was so much sadness, okay? So my ability to internalize what someone else is thinking or feeling has served me incredibly well over the years. When somebody is struggling with weight loss, I can imagine how that makes them feel. 
when an athlete is injured or they get injured and now they're rehabbing, like I can internalize and almost feel what's going on with it. So it's very, very hard. It's very hard as a coach or a trainer to deal with some of this stuff. But what you have to be able to do is just put yourself in their shoes. So if somebody's coming to you and they're overweight, they're out of shape, they're injured, they're unhappy, imagine the weight that they're carrying every single day. Now, once you have that, now I want you to think about how does that impact them? How does that impact how hard they train when they come in the gym, right? If they don't feel good, if they're unhappy, if they're struggling with certain things outside of the gym, they're probably not going to have the most energy when they walk in, you know? How is that going to impact if they don't think they can lose weight, right? Or they've been overweight their whole life. How is that going to impact their ability to follow the nutritional guidelines you're giving them? Okay, so we have to learn to develop this empathy because becoming more empathetic allows you to know when to push someone. It allows you to know what buttons to push because there are certain buttons you can push with some people that you can't with others, right? It's like a big keyboard and you're like trying to play the symphony. You know, certain people, you have to hit certain notes at certain times. Others, not so much. But if you don't have this empathic ability, if you can't try and imagine what somebody's going through, then it's very hard to know these things. And, you know, if you are one of these people that knows or likes to push and likes to try and get a result out of somebody, sometimes you're not going to know when it when you got to back off. And I think that's part of the art of coaching here too, right? It's knowing what buttons to push, when to push them. It's also knowing when to back off. So if you can learn to develop your empathy and start to really understand what somebody is thinking, what they're feeling, what they're going through, you're going to be able to relate to them at a much higher level and you're ultimately going to get a better training effect with them. Okay, number three, find your best ways to motivate. And there's a very strong emphasis on the word your here. Because if you would have asked me back in the day, I would have said, you know, uh, not every trainer or coach needs to motivate. And I would have said, well, I'm not a motivator. I'm not this rah-rah kind of guy. But I've kind of come off that stance in, in recent years because I feel like every great trainer or coach finds ways to motivate their clients and athletes. But, and this is very important, but every coach has their own unique way of doing it. So here's an example. If you've ever been to a Perform Better or you've ever seen guys like Martin Rooney or Todd Durkin give a talk or take people through a workout, it's very easy to be like, oh my gosh, this guy is amazing. I absolutely suck. <laughs> like I am not that guy. So this was really, I mean, it, it bordered on disheartening for me early on, right? Because I did not come from that mold. I am not this rah-rah motivational type guy. And in no way am I implying that's all they're good at. I'm just saying, if you've ever watched them, these guys are really good at getting people fired up and getting them into a training session. Okay, so let's say you're not that kind of person because I'm not. How do you motivate people? And I think there's a lot of ways you can do that. There's a lot of different buttons you can push. So there's other ways you can motivate, like your communication and your speech. We already talked about communication early on, but hey, if you can motivate people with their with your words, yeah, it doesn't have to be like at a really high cadence. It doesn't have to be very, very loud in your face. But just communication with your words can make a big impact. Your personal energy, right? So there's a lot of times I am very chill and I am very laid back, whether I'm coaching, whether I'm at home, but there are certain times where I have to lift my energy level up to try and get the results and the training effect that I want. Another way you can think about it, it's not just your personal energy, but the gym energy and the gym culture. So if you've got good energy and good culture in your gym, then other people are going to help lift people up and motivate them. Music is another one. This is something that I've talked a lot about with the introverts that have come through as interns or as young coaches in my gym. You don't have to be the rah-rah motivational type, but hey man, if you've got good music going, elevates the energy, elevates the mood, now you've got a little bit more motivation going. And then arguably the most important way or the most effective way to motivate somebody is to know their goals and to relate to them constantly. So 
for the person that wants to lose weight, they don't want to just lose weight. There's an emotional reason behind losing that weight. So if a woman comes to you and says, I want to lose 20 pounds, there's an emotional reason there too, right? Maybe it's feeling sexy at home. Maybe it's feeling confident when she goes to the beach on spring break. Like, I don't know what that is, but the better you can know and understand their goals and then relate to them, that is arguably the most motivating thing you can do for a client or athlete. So don't hide behind this idea of, well, I'm not a rah-rah motivational type. You don't have to be. There are a lot of ways that you can motivate someone, but now you have to ask yourself which one comes most naturally to you. Because once you figure that out and use it, you are immediately more powerful as a coach. We have to motivate at certain points in time. Maybe it's not every day. Maybe it's not in that rah-rah type sense, but you got to find ways to motivate your clients to get them to continue pushing forward. Because if you can figure out what strategies work best for you, you're immediately more effective as a coach. Number four, slow down and listen. Now, this may seem incredibly basic, but I'm telling you right now, guys, learning to slow down and listen is definitely a superpower, especially in this day and age. And I just think about, you know, with social media right now, everybody and their brother is talking. Here's me. Here's me. Here's what I'm doing. Let me talk about myself. Da 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 da. And, and I do it too. <laughs> so I am not throwing stones from my glass house, right? We love to talk about ourselves. We love to put ourselves out there. But with everybody talking, who is listening? It's really powerful, right? Or just think about a conversation that you had. How many times are we in the throes of a conversation? We're not even listening to what the other person is saying because we're too busy thinking about what we're going to say next. We have to learn to become better listeners. So whether you like it or not, here's a hard reality of working with clients and athletes. A large population of the people that work with us are paying as much for friendship, camaraderie, and FaceTime with another human being as they are for training. It's just a simple fact. People need human connection. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. But people want friendship. They want camaraderie. They want FaceTime with somebody because they're not getting that other places. So a lot of times I think of that time between sets as incredibly valuable. Some of the most important times that I have had with my athletes are those downtimes in between sets. And, you know, I know one-on-one -on -one training kind of gets a bad rap. Everybody wants to scale and they want to do semi-private and work with four people because it's more profitable. And I want to do more large group stuff because I can scale better. Like, look, I'm not telling you those things are bad. But just don't discount the power and the value of one-on-one -on -one because those downtimes, those rest periods are absolutely critical. That's where you can really figure out what this person is all about. What makes them tick? What are they passionate about in their life? And, you know, another thing that I have learned over the years, a lot of times with my athletes too, is that not just the time in between sets, because sometimes during a session you're cranking right? And rightfully so. The goal is to get in there, do what needs to be done, and move on. But one thing that I have always tried to take advantage of is if my athletes are hanging out and just chilling after a session, if I have time, I'm going to go over there and chill and sit with them. It may only be five minutes. Sometimes it's going to be 15 or 20. But the time afterwards where you can just sit down and listen to their story, listen to what's going on in their life can be such a powerful tool. So if you really want to take your soft skills to the next level, learn to slow down and listen to the clients and athletes you work with. It will make a huge impact. Last but not least, number five, take the time to build a connection. And I think connection really is the name of the game. Uh, you know, I, I did this Cars article and video a while back talking about connection, accountability, and results things that people want from us as coaches, why they hire us, why they want to use our services. And I keep coming back to not just listening, but people are just craving connection with other people these days. It's like social media is, is arguably the greatest fallacy because they call it social, but you can do it 
anywhere, anytime, without other human beings around, right? There's nothing social about it. Like, you're basically a recluse sitting in your room, staring at a phone at three in the morning, liking photos or creating content. Like, that's not real. That's not truly social. So people are craving connections these days. And I found this out very early on when I was doing in-home training. It was a one-on-one environment. But these people, man, they were incredibly wealthy, but a lot of them needed connection with another person. So how did I do that? Well, I obviously listened and I was empathic or empathetic, but man, I listened to them and I tried to learn as much as I could about their jobs, their children, their hobbies. Because a lot of times as a 27-year-old kid, I didn't know what they were up to, right? Like a guy that is 50 some years old and into woodworking, like I had zero interest in that or wine. I even drink wine at the time, but I started reading like Wine Spectator magazine so I could have rational conversations with this guy. So the question for you becomes, how can you truly connect with someone else? And this is something that, hey, you know, sometimes it is maybe through social. Maybe sometimes it's DMing somebody and just letting them know, hey, I'm thinking about you or hey, great work on your nutrition this week. Sometimes it's that, but you know, I think more importantly, you have to ask yourself, how can I show this person that I truly care, that I care about them, not just in the gym or not just about the results that we're working towards. How do I care about this person as a human being? And as I started to bring this together, I really think like this whole concept of connection, it's a blend, or maybe it's the result of all the other stuff coming together. So when you're communicating effectively, when you're empathetic, when you're motivating your people, when you're listening to them, all of these things come together and that is what truly builds the connection. But I mean, you want to talk about a superpower. I think over the years, I've worked very hard to develop my hard skills, to become a strong technician, whether it's writing a program, coaching and queuing. I feel like, yes, I've checked those boxes, but I think the thing that most of my people would tell you about me is every one of my clients and athletes, I think, would tell you without a doubt that put all the sports aside, all the training sessions aside, Mike cares about me as a human being. He cares about me being successful, not just in sport, but in life. And so once your clients and your athletes can say that, man, I think really nothing can stop you as a trainer or coach. And it's not one of these hard skills, right? It's not writing a better training program or having a better coaching cue. It's the simple fact that your clients and athletes feel a connection with you and they feel like you truly care. Okay, so that does it for today. Five very simple things that I think you can work on. Superpowers that you can create for yourself to become a better trainer or coach. Let's recap. Number one, improve your communication skills. Writing, speaking, doesn't matter how you deliver the message. Becoming more clear, more concise, more persuasive in how you communicate with your clients and athletes will absolutely make you a better trainer or coach. Number two, develop empathy. Put yourself in their shoes. Why are they really here? What are they feeling? How can you help them via your training and coaching? Developing that empathy muscle is so important because so many people are dealing with stuff and they may never talk about it. It's your job to try and figure out how they're feeling and then help them navigate that each and every time they come in the gym. Number three, find your best ways to motivate. Everybody has a different DNA. Everybody has a different preferred way to motivate their clients and athletes. Don't worry about what anybody else does. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what ways come most naturally to you. Number four, slow down and listen. Everybody's talking. Everybody has a voice. Who's really listening? Are you going to be the person that listens to your client and athlete so that they know, hey, this person really cares. This person wants to see me succeed. And then last but not least, take the time to build a connection. When you layer in all these things, when you communicate better, when you're empathetic, when you know how to motivate your clients, when you slow down and listen, those are the things that form that bond. And again, 
If you're in this for the long haul, it's all about bonds. It's all about relationships. So if you can find ways to consistently connect with your clients and athletes, really the sky is the limit with regards to the results that you can help them get. So my friend, that does it for this week's episode. As always, thank you so much for your support. Love and appreciate you. And we'll be back next week with our next episode. Take care.